Hi, and welcome to The Bright Balloon, a podcast where I'm sharing bright ideas for your balloon business. My name is Sarah Meyer, and I'm a balloon business owner like you, and I love the creative side of what I do, but I really love the business side, which seems to be the part where most people struggle. So I'm here to help. Each week, I'm bringing you an episode full of bite-sized tips you can use to make tiny improvements to your business. I want you to make more money, eliminate stress, and learn along with me as we grow our creative businesses together. Welcome to The Bright Balloon. Welcome to this episode. Today I am chatting about price transparency. So the idea that your prices are out in the open for everybody to see. Um, You're not hiding anything. Nothing's a secret. It's totally transparent. Anyone can access it. So I'm going to be chatting about several reasons why this is something that I do and why I believe it's something you should consider if your prices are a secret. But first, let's take a quick break and hear from our sponsors. Real quick before we do that, I just wanted to mention that the sponsors are the biggest reason um, that this podcast still exists. They almost exclusively fund the podcast. So the best way to support the podcast is to check them out. Click on the links in the show notes. And if something is a good fit and you do end up purchasing or working with one of them, um, mention that you found out about them from the Bright Balloon podcast. That really helps. If you've listened to any episodes of this podcast, you know that I think the most important part of running a balloon business is the customer experience. I like making it easy for my customers to purchase from me and pay me. I like making the process clear and I like being really approachable and easy to talk to, which is why as a customer, I love receiving that same treatment when I shop for balloons. I love having a party wholesale because they take care of me as their client. They always have recommendations. They treat me with respect they know the industry, and they make it easy for me to shop and pay. So if you are in need of a balloon distributor or just want to check them out, click the link in the show notes and let them know that the Bright Balloon sent you. All right, welcome back. Let's talk about prices. So for a while, I felt like nobody had their prices anywhere. And I know this because I started balloons about six years ago. And at the time, I couldn't figure out how much anything costs. Like I went to other people's websites to figure out what I should be charging and nobody had their prices anywhere. So for a while I was like, well, I guess I shouldn't either. It's a secret, I guess. But no, um, I feel like that has changed a bit and I absolutely have my prices on my website. You can go check them out if you'd like. Um, But I see more and more people pulling the trigger and putting their prices on the website. And um, I'm going to tell you why you should consider that. So the first reason, it filters out your customers before they even get to you. So I think a lot of, here's here's where I think there's some valuable thought, but I, I don't think it's worth it. I think a lot of people think, I'm going to capture as many email addresses as I possibly can. So I'm going to ask them to fill out my form before they know the prices. Then I'm going to send them to them. So if they, if it's too much, at least I get their email. But here's my argument. Do you really want your email list full of a bunch of people who can't afford your products? In my opinion, no. So I see my prices as like the very first line of defense for filtering my customers. Not like I want to say like, I want to get rid of all the cheapos. Like not at all. Some people value balloons other than, you know, more than other people. So I want the people that are going to value me, value my business, value my product and my prices and want to work with me. So when they see my prices and they know that a balloon arch is, you know, $350 and they want to move forward, that saves, that saves me the time from having to like filter out those people because sometimes you get all the way down the planning process and then you realize they don't have the budget or they're not interested in spending that much. So I think prices on the website are, I think that's the easiest way to filter clients that maybe aren't a good fit for you. Um, so number two, I kind of mentioned it's really helpful and it saves time. And that's for both of you. That is for you and your client. It saves them time. Like I personally get kind of annoyed when there's no prices on a website. I'm more likely to reach out to a company that I have an idea of what it's going to cost. I always talk about this house that we live in that I'm currently renovating. 
Uh, I was looking for someone to come and give a chimney inspection. Someone had it on their website that it was $150. Someone else had it on their website that I had to reach out for a quote. I went with the $150 person because maybe the quote was going to be $100, but I don't care. I just wanted to schedule it. I wanted to know what it was going to cost and I booked it. Um, And it turns out our chimney is in terrible shape. So that was a bummer, (laughs) but at least the booking process was simple. So I think it's helpful to the customer. It's also helpful and saves time on my end, because like I said, I'm not spending all day responding to requests that have no interest in actually booking me. And again, that's not their fault. People have no clue what balloons cost and it's not their fault. Um, Half of us don't know what balloons should cost. We are always working on our pricing. So you cannot fault a person for thinking a balloon column is going to be $50 when really it's $150. Like they truly have no idea. Um, All right. The third reason why I think it's great, like I mentioned at the beginning, when I was looking for pricing, it sets an industry standard. So I think a lot of people avoid putting pricing on their website because they don't want their competitors to see it, thinking that they'll come in under them. But think about it on the flip side. If you're If your competitors can see that you are charging $300 for an arch, hopefully they will charge $300 for an arch. Maybe they'll charge $400 for an arch, or maybe they'll charge $250 for an arch. But if you don't have any pricing on your website, they might charge $100 for an arch. So I think having your prices available at least sets some kind of industry standard. Um, And it also sets an expectation. If you have some nice, st- steady pricing on your website. Um, so, you know, for me, I now have a $1,000 minimum um, for anything outside of my county. So if I'm going to travel any distance, it's going to be a big event, $1,000 minimum. And that number I know scares people away and that's okay. I don't want to spend 15 emails back and forth designing a baby shower with a $200 budget an hour for my house. It's just not in my business plan. So if that thousand dollars is scary, that is okay because a thousand dollars to an event planner or a corporate client is nothing. They won't even flinch. So having that on my website sets the standard. It kind of indicates I'm maybe not the right choice for someone who wants a balloon bouquet, but I'm definitely the right choice for someone who is planning an event for 2000 people. Um, all right, the next thing, and this is this is something that I believe in, it's fair. Having your prices on your website, it's fair. It holds you accountable. I think that there's this idea that like, if you know you have a big fish on the line, you should charge them more. And I really disagree with that. I think it's going to get you into trouble. I think it's dishonest. I think if you're charging someone more, it's it's for services or it's for product. Like I charge more for corporate clients, not because they have a big budget, but because they order more stuff. So if they have a big budget, it's because I'm selling more balloons or maybe it's because delivery is, you know, in the city and it's early and there are some service add-ons in there. But, but my, my items cost what they cost. I don't believe in a balloon column costing one thing for one person and more for someone else just because I think they have money. Like I think that is dishonest. So having your prices on your website keeps it fair And it announces to the world that your pricing is fair. Um, The worst thing you could potentially do is, you know, quote someone something and then like months later, maybe they reach out again and you quote them something else. That just dissolves any trust, any any sense of um, like a relationship or trustworthiness. I think having your prices on your website is just like a a broadcast that you are fair, that you are above board and that you treat everybody equally. All right, I have a few more and we're going to take a quick break and then get right back into it. How many Google reviews do you have? Hi, I'm Jeff at Asset Lab. And did you know that we recommend businesses get to 40 five-star reviews on Google My Business before they even start asking for reviews on other platforms? If you're facing competition, we work with balloon decor companies every day and we can help you figure out what's the right thing to do for you so that you can get more leads, more phone calls, more contact form submissions. Learn more about us at assetlab.us. All right, welcome back. We are talking about pricing. Okay, I have two more, and these are good ones. Uh, This tip, 
about why you should have your prices on your website. It saves you time. So I answer emails. I answer inquiries all over the place. Like physically, wherever I am, I will answer. Um, I work in an office. Sometimes I send emails and quotes from there. I work at home. I'll work at a coffee shop. Sometimes I'll have it on my phone because I run everything through my CRM. I run everything through 17 hats. So I'm able to do things pretty mobile. But with that said, I am not sitting at a desk with like a pricing catalog in front of me. Um, I don't have like post-it notes in front of me that, that says what my current rate is for certain items. And I don't really have all those memorized um, because I change my prices. I increase my prices year after year and I don't have them all memorized and I don't want to misquote someone and lose out on money. So by having my prices on my website, it's a tool. It's a resource for me that I can go to wherever I am in the world and look at my own pricing. So some of you are probably chuckling and being like, I can't believe you don't know your own prices. But some of you people out there, some of you creatives, you totally get it. It's hard to keep track of things. Or you think something's 40, but really it's 30. And you think something's 100, but really you raise your price to 125 and you totally forgot. I like having my menu on my website as a resource for me. So I can access it wherever I am. I can double check my pricing and it keeps me not only honest, but accurate. Like sometimes I just make mistakes. If I'm depending on what's in my brain, I need to see it written down. And if I'm having to be in a specific place, like an office, I'm going to be slower. Like I need to be able to quote people to send things at an array of areas. So whether I'm at a coffee shop or in my office or wherever, I like having my prices accessible and as long as they're on my website, I can find them. So that's, that's a really simple reason, but it's key. All right. And the last point, it makes raising your prices really, really simple. So this, I never really understood until I started doing it, but sometimes raising your prices can be scary because Someone who books from you frequently knows that a balloon marquee is $100, but now it's $125 and you have to be the person to hold them to that. But guess what happens? You won't because you'll feel bad and you'll just say, oh, you know, I'll just honor my old pricing because this is a return customer. But then you start doing that for everyone and all of a sudden your price is your old price. So I think having your prices on your website and then increasing them once a year once a quarter, whenever, increasing them and hitting publish, it holds you accountable and it puts it out there. It, your customers know and they can look and they might think, oh, I thought it was $100. It's either I was wrong or now it's $125, whichever. The price is the price. So having your prices published holds you accountable to actually charging them because it's, it's weird. It's weird if they don't align. Someone expects to pay one, you know, one thing. And then if you come under that, it's weird. If you're over that, it's weird. Just put your prices on your website and it keeps everyone happy. Everyone is clear on what things cost, including you. And I think if you are going to raise prices by slowly announcing them to people, booking by booking, that also is really exhausting and there's no reason to do that. Um, this year, actually, I read uh, Chillpreneur, which you know, I've talked about this book 50 times. I love it. Chillpreneur. And there's a chapter in there about raising your pricing. And I don't know, I was feeling super encouraged. And I sat down at my kitchen counter, pulled out my website. I went in and I just raised all my prices and I hit publish. I also raised my delivery fees a lot and I hit publish. And I never look back. There's something about that publish button that makes it feel like it's official. And I've never gone back. And also no one has ever questioned those price increases. So I think having them published on the website so people can see them um, kind of avoids the whole conversation about raising your rates. It's just it just makes them a reality. Um, so, yeah. There are my tips. Let's review them really quick because I knew I know I threw a lot at you really quick. Um, but if you can't tell by my voice, this is something that I'm super uh, in favor of, super passionate about. I think it will really help you. It's like magical. It makes you more money without any effort. Um, so again, it filters out your clients. It, it lets them figure out if they're a good fit before you have to even interact with them. The second tip, it's helpful for you and for them. It saves some of that time. Uh, three, it sets an industry standard. So if you have any looky-loos trying to price shop or compare, um, 
they will know what the going rate is and hopefully they will rise to your pricing. Um, the fourth tip, it's fair and it makes you look fair. Fifth, it saves you time in case you are out and about and you need to reference your own prices. And the final tip, it makes raising your prices really easy and it holds you accountable. So if you don't have any pricing on your website, get it, get in there, make those updates. It doesn't have to be fancy. It doesn't have to be like a crazy menu. They can just be listed. Done is better than perfect. So make sure to get those prices updated if they're outdated, um, charge what you're worth and be firm in that pricing. And for some reason that publish button on the website, Oof, it does it for me. So I hope it does it for you. I will chat with you in the next episode. Thanks for joining me in this week's episode. As usual, I tried to keep it bright and light in a few minutes or less. If you wish there were more episodes, you are in luck. You can join us in our Patreon group for our monthly book club. I record weekly episodes guiding you through a different self-development book each month. For as little as $3 a month, you can join more than 50 other balloon business owners in our private group. Click the link in the show notes to join us. So many of you have reached out and told me how the podcast has changed your business, and I love hearing those stories, but you might be ready to take things to the next level. If that's you, you should check out the laser focused solopreneur course where I walk you through more than two hours of video content showing exactly how I run my business as a solopreneur. I run a six figure balloon business. I work a full time job. I have a toddler and I produce this podcast weekly. And it's not because I'm more efficient than anybody else. It's just because I apply this laser focused framework to every decision that I make. If you're struggling with work-life balance, figuring out how to grow your business in a manageable way, and feeling like there just aren't enough hours in the day, this course is for you. Check it out using the link in the show notes.